All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Theodora Lacey School First Town Hall. My name is Leslie King. I'm the principal of the Lacey School and so excited um, despite what's going on and our inability to be together this year. We are really excited about our new school. Um, we've been working tirelessly uh, to prepare the school uh, for whatever it is to come. And I would be remiss to not thank all of the people that have helped get Lacey uh, up and running. So uh, obviously our administrative offices and board of education, mm -hmm. as well as our superintendent, assistant superintendents and supervisors for their support. And specifically the people that have been kind of in the trenches, um, our operations and management crew, our custodians, our vendors. I mean, the building is really coming along. It looks amazing and we can't wait to have our families back. Um, however, we do support the district in making sure that we uh, remain safe and our children and our teachers also remain safe. So to mit mitigate circumstances for COVID-19, um, Lacey School, as well as the other schools in TNEC will be 100% virtual. Um, so our goal is to really maintain a really high quality experience for all of our students despite going virtual this year and to be flexible and adaptable. On, on what's to come. So we're really uh, proud of the teachers at um, Lacey School. Many of our teachers, your children know. So for those of you, just a little logistics, we had about 150 uh, pre-K-4 students at Bryan School. So many of them are familiar with myself um, and many of the teachers that they will be working with next year. So we're excited. They'll have some familiar faces. They know a lot of the teachers. Um, and so those 150 kids that were at Bryan, a majority of them are coming over and they will be joining us as um, uh, students at the Lacey School. So a lot of your kids know me already and I'm excited and they've seen a lot of the teachers over the past two years um, during their time at Bryan School. So um, this is an opportunity for us to answer a lot of questions um, that have been coming up as we've made the shifts to a 100% virtual learning. Um, but please note that all of the frequently asked questions or the questions that we are getting um, are posted on the Bryant website. Um, so we took questions prior to uh, the, today's meeting and many of our parents um, were very active and sent us emails and wanted to know exactly specifics. And so I have that frequently asked document that is on the website that each of you can go on and just kind of process what's going on as well. And then of course, I'll go through some kind of normal, normal questions that people are gonna ask. Um, I had the pleasure of jumping on um, a, a couple of the other town halls. So I'm getting a sense of the questions that people are asking Asking basically what is our school going to look like? What is our day? What is our responsibility? So I'll spend some time um, going into that as well. Um, but again, you know, please don't feel any need to take notes. Um, all of this information will be posted in a document called the Theodore Lacey uh, Frequently Asked Questions document, and they are in question form. And majority of the questions have come directly from parents. Um, so just a couple of things. Um, if you guys have uh, children in, in the different schools, some of this might be somewhat repetitive, but some of it is new for kindergarten. So as you know, we'll be 100% virtual this year, 100% um, distance learning, and students will be re re required to follow the daily schedule. Um, right now, we're going into the first semester until further notice. Um, so those that information was um, was provided through the superintendent. He sent a number of very important um, emails and posted things on the website, um, just giving parents some guidance on what's to come. Um, this year for the first time at the Lacey School, um, kindergarten students will be issued Chromebooks um, prior to the start of school. So if you missed that email, please go on to the TNEC website and there is a schedule for the Chromebook Depot where you can pick up your Chromebooks um, to start your children. I definitely suggest you do that sooner than later to get your children comfortable and you guys can develop certain norms in your home as well in terms of how you want the Chromebook managed in your house, where do you want to put it, how do you ensure it's powered up. So if you give your children a couple of days to kind of get that excitement out, hopefully um, it'll remain safe and it will last the duration of um, while we're out of school. 
Um, teachers are going to be coming in September 1st. Um, many of our teachers will be coming in before because we are making this transition to Lacey School. So I know they're anxious to at least get in and kind of dig into some of the instructional materials so they can bring them home and they can create really engaging learning experiences with your children. Our goal, especially as this is our first entryway for many of our kids, um, is to not make this a passive learning experience, but to try to find ways to engage your students and personalize the education for each one of our classes and each one of our personalities, our class personalities. So we're really kind of um, looking forward to trying to build that school community and that class community um, virtually um, this year. But I can say, and I'm confident that um, we have had um, very good experience doing that at the Bryan School, where I was previously the principal and worked very closely with many of the teachers um, who will be leading in kindergarten. So I'm really confident that we can um, utilize some of our best practices that we've had in the past to ensure that all our students feel like they are part of a class community, that they're excited to sign on every day, they're excited to see their friends and teachers, and to, of course, the major um, component is to be learning. Um, so we don't want it to be a passive experience for the students. So um, as with all of the other elementaries, our student, our teachers will engage the students in a variety of ways. They'll do whole class lessons, small group lessons, individual check-ins, um, and try to increase the personalization and also kind of um, increase the students' um, stamina. So, you know, beginning of the lessons, the day may be small, short lessons, as children develop stamina to stay on the computer, to listen more intensely, to participate at higher levels. So it will be a gradual release of responsibility of the teachers and hopefully as parents, a gradual release for you. Um, so the best case scenario is that you will be partnering with your children every day. Maybe if you're working from home, you're kind of sitting with them and you know, you're doing your work and they have their headphones on and eventually you may be able to move a little bit further away from your children um, as they become more independent um, using the Chromebook, logging in and things like that. I'm really um, happy to to share out that the district has done a lot of great things to assist parents um, in the Chromebook and just the students getting used to. So each student will have a QR code, which is their ID. Um, each of the camera, uh, each of the Chromebooks is set up to scan that QR code for our students. So the idea of you know you having to log on every day for your children again, it'll be something that they will learn a habit that they will have to. Um, practice in order to just like get them to log on. And as with any beginning of school, we will spend the first three, four or five weeks, whatever it takes to get students used to um, some of the norms in the classroom, how to click on the Google Classroom, um, how to log in and log back off, how to go into another teacher's classroom, where to put a comment, how to raise a hand. So all of that stuff will be taught. This is nothing new for us as kindergarten teachers and um, with kindergarten and early learning community. We know that children come in with a varying levels of independence. Some have never been in school, some have been in school. So, you know, this will all be a learning experience for us. And I know that our teachers will be very patient and caring through the process. Um, our teachers will work collaboratively to develop lessons that will engage students in really meaningful ways. Um, I'm really excited about our teachers coming together virtually and planning. They did an amazing job transitioning in March and many of our teachers participated in the summer program in Summer Bridge and really got a feel of what it is to really be teaching live. Um, you know, I don't um, assume that it is easy, um, but I think they're up for the challenge and I know that our parents are going to partner with us to make it work. Um, and so that is basically the um, some of our goals. Um, a typical schedule um, for kindergarten, that was one of the questions uh, that was asked. So I'm just going to go through a typical schedule that might happen for our students. So our school day starts every day at 8.45. So our learning, our kind of school day um, is um, 8.45 to 2.45, um, less a lunch break, less independent work, 
or special projects. So um, that is the school day for us, 8.45 to 2.45. So from 8.30 to 9 o'clock in the morning, you're going to be getting your kids up doing your normal kind of morning routines, um, organizing their learning space, um, turning on, making sure the computer is uh, plugged in and they have everything that they need, their supplies. Our teachers are going to work when they return in September. They're going to work on some educational kits for our kids, and then we will distribute those through the Chromebook Depot in the high school. So it may include a whiteboard and um, some materials that they can use to engage at home. So you would, you know, hold up something to show the teacher that you're paying attention and that you're participating in, you know, and the teachers will use those as assessment opportunities as well. So for the first 30 minutes, you're going to be kind of getting uh, your kids ready. Um, for those of the kids who are gun ho and ready to go, the teacher might have some morning work for them to do as they prepare to come in and take attendance. As students um, jump on the Google Classroom, um, they'll review the daily schedule for the work. They'll work on some social emotional stuff. Um, and usually the morning meeting will consist of calendar work, counting, um, and most, and this would be something that is considered live instruction where you will see the teacher's face and the teacher will We'll use a mix, um, a mixed grouping of maybe videos or um, interactive, um, interactive um, software and websites to get kids to participate in that. Um, so they'll do that. We'll have a 15-20 minute morning meeting again, building in endurance and stamina as you know students get more familiar. And then maybe around 9:30, you would have a special, and that might be a physical education, art music, um, Spanish, and those could be a mix of live instruction or recorded or combination of both. Then you might have a break, a brain break, a mindfulness activity, a snack around 10 o'clock. So now our students have been working for a good hour, you know, so we have a little break, maybe breakfast, bathroom. Um, some teachers may keep the computer on where kids can snack and socialize. And some um, are kind of historically what we found is most families would just click off and come back in 15, 20 minutes. Um, sometimes you come back to a small group and sometimes you come back to a whole group. Um, then around 10.20, 10.30, you might start your literacy instruction. You might, you will have a live instruction by your um, teacher, and then you might break off into small groups or independent instruction or maybe something on a different website or some type of engaging activity. Um, and that would assist with the transition to lunch. At 11.05, around 11 o'clock, you get a break for lunch, 45 minutes to 50 minutes. We come back at 12. Um, 12, 12 o'clock, we would start STEM, math, science. Um, you may do a book after lunch uh, to kind of get the kids back, um, back on track and um, engaged. And then we go from 12 to about 12.45 with math, mini lessons, practice, um, things maybe that they can do in the house, counting and things like that. And then around 12.45, you might have another activity. It could be anything from uh, fine motor skills or uh, writing or something, maybe a um, social emotional lesson, a character education, maybe something historic. If we're studying a particular unit, might do some social studies, STEM and science. And then at around 1.25, um, we would kind of wind down the day. Teachers would talk a little bit about their plans for the next day and any extension activities that might happen from 1.25 to about 2.05 where we would close the day. Um, from 2.05 to 3.15, which is the teacher's usually preparation period, um, again, it could be a mix of your child's specials or if your child is enrolled in an ESL program or literacy enrichment um, for additional support. So those would take place either at the end of the day. So we're going to try to, you know, put the specials at the end of the day. So a majority of the students learning takes place in the morning. Um, so that was the typical schedule. Um, and um, I'm going to pause just to check on my Q&A and then I'm going to kind of go into some questions um, that parents have sent us prior. The teachers be supervising regarding their work with kids. Okay. 
So I think the question is, will the teachers be supervised? So the district um, has very um, specific um, expectations as for me as a building principal and our school leadership. Um, all of the codes for classrooms will be shared with the administration. At any time, a supervisor or superintendent is expected to go into a Google Classroom, participate. I mean, as I would in every in any school, anyone who knows me um, knows that, you know, I try to be very visible. I enjoy, um, you know, popping into classrooms and asking children what, they, what they're doing and asking teachers what they're working on. So, um, you know, there are um, benchmarks in place for our teachers and expectations um, for our teachers to monitor. However, you know, you are your child's first teacher and the expectation is that you will be there to support your students, especially as they become very independent. I mean, we see a lot of growth in kindergarten normally and we expect to see the same level of growth and autonomy that um, occurs as teachers um, guide and direct the students. Another question we had is, um, is it possible to meet our child's teacher before school starts? And the question is, um, the answer is yes. The first week of school will be virtual half days. Um, these days are essentially meet and greet opportunities for kids, fun, fun activities, meet support staff in the, in the building and things like that. So this will take place via Google Meets and Google Classroom. So no Zoom, but we will go ahead and do Google Meets and you'll get individual um, in bites for those things. Another question was when will we find out who our child's teacher is? Um, if you have not already found out who your child's teacher is, um, please make sure that you go on to the Family Access. That information is posted on the district's um, website and also on the Lacey website. Um, and that way um, you go into Skyward and as soon as your student's data comes up, it gives you their your classroom teacher. Um, however, we will follow up as normally with a teacher letter and invite and other data. All of that stuff will be sent um, via email. Another question is, do we sign up for our kids for specials? Oh, great question, Ms. Denise. Um, no, you don't need to sign up for your kids specials. We have a number of specials that are part of our kindergarten program, actually our K-4 program. Um, we provide um, language instruction in Spanish, um, music, PE, and art. Um, so those specials will um, be facilitated in the teacher schedule. So if you're with Ms. Smith, um, you might have um, gym every other day at 10 o'clock. Or if you're in Ms. Wester's class, you might have Spanish at the end of the day on um, Tuesday. So you don't need to sign up. All children will participate in specials. Um, hello, three of students per class and three teachers per class. How many classes are at Lacey? Okay, so really excited, anonymous attendee. We have nine classes at uh, Lacey. We have seven general ed and two um, special education uh, classes. Um, so we have a total of nine classes and we also have three additional kindergarten classes at the other elementary school. Okay. Um, when will we get parent training for virtual? So parent training is going on now. Um, again, please click on the teenexschools.org website. There are a number of virtual trainings provided for parents to familiarize you with yourself with Google. I mean, we are training us as well as a staff, um, you know, kind of learning some of the nuances and tricks, especially in how we can um, make it feasible for kindergarten. Um, but the parent training um, took place um, August 24th to 28th. The district will be hosting Parent and Community Academy. It's a series of virtual where, uh, workshops for parents and there is a link and a full schedule there for parents. Um, Chromebooks, they, that schedule was also went out. Um, Chromebooks uh, Monday, today, Monday and Tuesday from 8.30 to 11, Tuesday, um, today's Tuesday. So if you wanted to, you can go right after this meeting to get your Chromebook to 7 o'clock. Wednesday only to 11, Thursday again 8 to 11, and then 4 to 7, so you have some evening hours. So all of the schedule is available. Ms. McBride, will virtual instruction take place in the classroom? Mm -hmm. So right now, um, as of now, teachers are not in the classroom. However, um, teachers will have an opportunity to go into the classroom and get instructional materials. So I know the assistant superintendents were trying to work out like a little bit of a 
a, a schedule um, to allow different um, cohorts of teachers to go into the classroom and get materials. We're kind of in a unique situation because we're literally just moving into the classroom. So we ha will have to ha create a socially distanced schedule for our teachers to actually go in and unpack their stuff and locate their stuff because much of our stuff is still at Ryan and transitioning over. Do we expect kindergartens to sit in front of the screen from 8 to 2.45? What happens when this type of learning isn't feasible? Great question, no. So um, as I went through the schedule, um, and again, when you see it visually, you'll be able to kind of get a sense that some of it is live, some of it is recorded, and some of it you can do at any time. Um, so if you miss your PE and because you have an appointment, you could always come back and click on that PE link and um, you know follow up. The Google Classroom is a stable environment, meaning if for some reason you can't participate live, right, um, you can always come back to that Google assignment and, you know, do it at your leisure with your child when your child is ready to receive that. Um, so it's not necessarily sit in front of the screen. And again, as I said, our goal is not to sit, have kids sit in front of the screen and not, and not make it a passive experience at all. How many students and teachers per class? We're actually about 20. Um, will the teacher-student ratio be during each subject? Great question. Um, so the student-teacher ratio, so um, when we get the schedule, I've asked teachers to kind of tease out which um, activities are going to be whole group, which activities are going to be independent, which activities will be a small group. So uh, on, a, on a given day, you might have uh, 10 to 15 students on, you might do a five to six minute mini lesson, and then you might say, okay, I need half of you to go ahead and do this click on this link and I'm going to be meeting with another group of teachers so all of that is going to be kind of fleshed out when teachers have an opportunity to collaborate together and do some planning um, but you know we will you know our, obviously our goal is to get children to um, socialize and be together and see each other so you know, we want to work up to a, a place where we have 20 kids, like kind of the Brady Bunch, who can, who can um, listen to each other. So, I mean, our goal is to get as many kids in a class together um, as often as possible. But obviously, for instructional purposes, we're going to have good reason to, you know, do small groups. We also have um, the same typical support that um, elementary has from K to four. So we have literacy enrichment teachers, ESL teachers, um, specialists, and all of those teachers will be leaning into support to ensure and help with the student ratio during the day. Um, headphones are provided. I don't believe, um, um, Mr. Saleh, are headphones provided with the Chromebooks? I don't believe so. And we always kind of recommend a child-friendly one um, that uh, can fit into a child's ear. So I don't believe that um, headphones are provided, but I do recommend them. Teachers do recommend them. How do you know which school your child is attending? I signed up for Hawthorne School. Okay, so I'm not sure um, if your child was, I'll have to get back to you. If you can maybe type your um, email in, um, I can um, try to respond back because I would need to know who your child is. Um, what is the half-day schedule? Great question, um, Sakina. Um, so the half-day schedule will be um, 8.45 to 11.30. Um, what about socialization, learning skills, and stuff like that? So we also are very lucky. We have a wonderful character education program and guidance counselor in the building, Ms. Brown, who will be transitioning with us for Bryan School. Her sole job is to work on social emotional learning, small group instruction, counseling, and just, um, you know, all of those kind of play and socialization. So again, she will be another educator that will be um, responsible for keeping the student-teacher ratio down and using those opportunities to work with small groups on socialization. So I know that's important and that's really the heart of our curriculum and our program. Um, then, so the, will the kids have a teacher to be with them through the whole virtual day? 
So students will either be in the classroom with their classroom teacher, or as I mentioned, they might be with a specialist periodically during the day for live instruction. And also a portion of the day will be independent learning where students may complete assignments given by the teacher through video or um, text instruction. And this work will be reviewed by the classroom teacher. Um, so kids will learn how to submit work. And so those will be used um, for assessments. Once we get a little bit more direction from the district, we've had a number of teachers that worked in the summer program um, and they have done assessment. So we're gonna look at the best way to do that for our kids. We don't normally start assessing kids and reading um, normally um, till January um, in kindergarten. Um, should we expect a schedule for the kids? Yes. Um, you should definitely expect a schedule for the kids. Um, the schedule will, again, look very similar with all the subject areas and breaks and things like that. But each teacher is going to be responsible for creating a schedule that works for their classroom. When will we know the plans for November? Again, we will be looking very closely at um, districts that are doing hybrid models and um, we'll be looking for the state and the county to determine what our expectations are for November. Will the parents get a preview of what will be taught for the week? I think so, Ms. Lampzusa, I, I would assume so, yes. Most of the teachers have always um, either sent weekly newsletters and things like that. Um, we will definitely need, need to partner with you in order to kind of prepare kids for learning and to kind of make sure that they are kind of understanding what topics and what units we're working on. So um, yeah, that's a great, um, a great idea. I think that it's something that we normally do, but I think we have to do it a little bit more formally in this virtual space. Okay, will the kids get any storybooks to read along with their teacher? So many of the books, uh, literacy program is um, has an online component. Um, so even when we were in the normal kindergarten setting, many of the books, choral reading and stuff was done on a whiteboard or um, a smart board. So um, we will continue to use the benchmark literacy suite that has virtual um, text along with that and then should we decide to create education kits that include books then those books would be available for students we also have a number of subscription services for our kindergarten um, students like tumble books where students can read online will we get a list of school supplies that we should keep at home great question denise it's already on the website and then teachers when they send their welcome letters they will send things home that are maybe more specific to their class but generally the kindergarten supply list is um, pretty consistent so that's posted um, posted school supplies are posted um, if you need anything, if you are in a, a situation where you need anything, please let us know. Um, I miss, uh, our guidance counselor, Ms. Brown, has backpacks and supplies are available. Usually the district around the start of the year has many um, book bags and school supplies available. So um, if, if there is a need, please let us know. What items are given to the children? Worksheets, workbooks? Yes, yes. Work, workbooks, um, materials for projects. We're really going to try to um, not kind of, you know, provide every student with art material. We're gonna encourage a lot of creativity and engagement using household materials and typical art supplies, things like toilet paper rolls and egg cartons and milk cans and stuff like that. So, um, and the same for music, um, specialists will try to engage students with simple household items so kids can sing and dance and participate. So. We don't necessarily um, are going to give you a pack of construction paper or anything like that. If there are any projects that we would need to do, um, we would plan ahead and we would provide that through um, the Chromebook Depot or some type of pickup opportunity. But we're really going to try to um, encourage a lot of creativity at home. We'll but um, curriculum, workbooks and stuff like that, yes, those will be given out. That's part of kind of our like our educational kit. So, you know, maybe the after the first week of school, second week of school, you might be asked to come to the high school and pick up your math textbook, your literacy benchmark textbook, um, you know, a few materials and supplies um, consistent throughout kindergarten. What can we do to keep the children active during the day? I don't know, um, during the day. So I think we, we have a lot of built-in breaks. We have a lot of built-in opportunities for students to uh, take breaks. 
Um, so um, again, we try to get them a lot, of, most of the instruction done in the morning so that if your children are having difficulty remaining active, especially the first few weeks, that if you need to take a break in the afternoon, that's what you're just gonna have to do. So um, we can talk more, um, You actually parents can talk more once uh, our teachers get to know your students a little bit about ways of what their students' interests are, what your child's interests are, and maybe make suggestions on how to keep them active during the day. Um, supplies, supplies, supplies. Are you using in a particular curriculum? If not now, yes. So we, Ms. McBride, um, great question. Um, we follow the same curriculum from uh, K to four. So we use Go Math. Um, which is consistent with the other elementary schools. We use benchmark literacy, which is consistent with the other schools. Um, we do a lot of engagement um, in terms of um, questioning. We, our staff has been professionally developed in many ways on how to students, how to engage students with text, um, questioning and things like that. So we don't have, uh, let's say, uh, tools of the mind does not continue, let's say, in kindergarten. We lean more towards the uh, K through four model where we are introducing our students to the curriculum that will follow them to fourth grade. Will a printer be required for worksheets? Um, I don't think a printer will be required for worksheet, but I wouldn't think it would be a bad idea to have a printer. Um, yes, virtual PE. Okay, so it's 6.36. I wanna get through some, a few more questions here. Um, how can the children make relationships and meet new friends? Um, well, I have to tell you, I've, I've, um, I don't know if one of my um, teachers is on who did the summer program. Um, I know that Ms. Hamoud and Ms. Smith, um, so maybe we can just bring them into the conversation to talk about how the students um, participated and got to know each other as new friends. So Ms. La, if you can bring in um, our panelists, Emily Smith who is our special education uh, teacher, and Ms. Nazreen Hamoud, who taught kindergarten. Both of them uh, taught through COVID and both of them taught over the summer. And um, I think that they would be best able to answer, how, do our ch how, how did you find our children were making relationships and making new friends? So thank you, Ms. Smith, for joining us. Thank you, Ms. Hamoud, if we can get you on. Um, maybe just talk a little bit about um, that and a little bit um, about your experience with kids developing relationships. Um, well, in the spring, they already knew each other, obviously, um, because we had been together the whole year. But as we transitioned into the summer, um, you'd be surprising how resilient your children are. They act like this is just normal and this is what they do. And what I did periodically was I would maybe come into class a couple of minutes late, but I'd actually be on with my camera off and my mic muted, and I would listen to them talk to each other. And then when I came in, I would sort of bring those conversations in and have them continue the conversation. Like if you know, two of them were on early and they were talking about something they did over the week, and I would listen for a few minutes, and then I would come back in, you know, a couple minutes later and say, "Oh, well, you know, I heard this. Let's talk more about that." And that kind of thing. Sometimes I would bring it into a writing lesson or bring it into some kind of language arts lesson. Um, but I did find shockingly, and I didn't expect it, that they communicate like they're sitting in the room next to each other they don't really act any different <laughs> which was good and surprising and nice actually so okay. i don't know if nizreen had a different experience but i certainly thought it was i don't see nizreen yet but thank you for sharing that i mean again i often wonder because i only get to see snapshots and again a lot of our kids did know each other so when we transition um, post COVID, you know, they were just uh, happy to see each other. Um, but yeah, so Nazreen, did you, uh, Ms. Hamoud is also going to be teaching kindergarten. Maybe share your experience about how children um, met and kept new relationships. Thanks for joining. You're muted. You're muted, Nazreen. <laughs> can't hear just you. Notice that. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, so I also, I did teach the Summer Bridge program, and, and as Mrs. Smith said, 
the students in the spring knew each other, but when we came into the Summer Bridge program, we were getting students from all the different elementary schools, including Bryant. So not everybody knew each other, but by the end of the program, and it was four weeks long, they, they knew each other by name. And it's more just like during morning meeting, you know, they're, they're kids, like Mrs. Smith said, this is so normal to them. Although it's not normal, it's so normal to them. And it took maybe two weeks of practicing how to mute and unmute themselves. And once they figured that out, they would unmute themselves all the time to comment. On once they figure that out, it's a problem because they mute themselves constantly. <laughs> they will comment on something that another student will say, or if a student is holding something up, they'll they'll unmute themselves to say, "Oh, I have that too," or "Oh, I really like that too." So I think that they just naturally know how to, um, you know, develop relationships. It's 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 just in them. So. I, I'm not even remotely concerned that they're not going to make a lot of friends this school year. And as a parent, you shouldn't be either. And we're really looking forward to it. All right. There you go. Because, you know, they don't have the, um, the past experiences that we have. So to them, this is kind of what they think school is at this point. You know, even though um, they were virtual last year, they, they, they're – their life is so much like different than ours. Everything changes for a little kid day to day and they kind of always just roll with it. So as far as they're concerned, this is what school is. And you know, when we actually go back in the classroom, they're going to be shocked. <laughs> so. Absolutely. I'm telling you, I had kids that were during show and tell, unmuting themselves to tell the other student, actually they would walk away, get what they wanted to share and then tell the other student, oh, I have this too. So I just yeah. think that it's just, it's just in them. They're just naturally social. Great. Awesome. You I mean, learn a lot about sharing just by learning to, like, just wait. now, since I cut you off. They learn how to <laughs> wait and not, like, it, it's actually, it's a different set of um, kind of sharing experiences, but it, it's, it's still good, I think. Yeah, and we still run the day the same way. I mean, on Mondays, we talk about our weekends. I know for myself, on Fridays, we had show and tell, and it was like the most exciting part of the week. So mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, although it's always nicer to be in person, I don't think that they will be missing out on the social aspect to that extent. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. You're welcome to stay on where, you know, I actually had to look at our FAQs and look at our schedule and it looks like we covered a lot of the questions. Um, thank you, Miss James. Yes, we're back with me. Yes, I changed my name. So I'm now Miss King. But for those of you who had me before, I always went by Miss Abru. But we're really excited, um, you know, to sh um, hopefully have your children back and kind of go on this journey with, with you. I mean, our teachers are constantly learning. Learning. We are all learning together. Um, so, you know, we're looking forward. Energy and confident. I'm worried. Oh, okay. Um, so we have a new, someone new, um, someone new coming into um, uh, Teaneck Public Schools. I'm sure she's worried. Your child is shy. And we did see that, you know, sometimes it does take children some time to feel like they want to talk. And, um, but that's, we have that even if we were in person, we have children that are shy and it takes them, you know, the first six weeks to really kind of open up. And, you know, I mean, and if it's not a testimony, we used to have to put numbers on our kids because when we would ask them their name, they, they were so shy, they wouldn't say their name. So for, for yeah. dismissal, we yeah. had like numbers for each kid. So I know your child is shy, but we're going to do um, everything we can to kind of bring their enthusiasm out. And again, I, I love what you said about it kind of being their norm. You know, we're the ones that are having to really make these uh, serious adjustments <laughs> to our teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we're definitely pushing, um, you know, pushing ourselves as educators and um, I'm really confident that all of the best practices that we have normally done um, will shift. Like, so, you know, if we have a, you know, when we have a child that's shy or we have a child that raises their hand every second, oh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see a teacher take out a fair cup. Yeah, guess what? We can do that virtually too, where each child will have an opportunity <laughs> to participate. So, you know, don't expect uh, tricks of the trade to disappear because we're virtual. They will still be there. Our teacher 
teachers will kind of reach back into their um, many, many tricks and collaborate um, to find ways to engage your children. We definitely don't want this to be a passive experience for our children. Um, Friday is a half a day for kindergarten. Um, so we will go from 8.30 to 11.30 and then lunch on your own. And then that afternoon teachers will participate in professional de development. More shy. Yeah. <laughs> Again, actually, no, the shy thing, this is, I was um, going to say the shy thing actually is that we're virtual. If when if and when we get back in the classroom, they'll already know us. So they'll transition probably much easier than they would have if we had just started normally. So yeah. also their child's shy. It's kind of a nice transition for them. And yeah. I was going to say, and they're kind of at home, which is more their comfort zone. So it's okay for them to be shy because, you know, if they're not ready to unmute themselves, that's all right. You know, there's always a thumbs up and there's just so many other things that they can do to express themselves if they're not ready to unmute themselves and talk with us. Mm -hmm. So the question is, um, are the children losing out on Friday? No, it's not necessarily, uh, it's Friday where they won't have their teacher, but the expectation is that they would participate in independent activities for that last hour or so of the day. So um, it is a half day. Friday afternoon is always fun Friday. Yeah, it's like a fun Friday. <laughs> Even when so, we're live. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be doing different activities for the Friday. Um, so that's a great question, Ms. Umbier. Um, I had that on my uh, frequently asked questions. Whoever your teacher is assigned, you are assigned to for your teacher, when and if we go back, you will go right into that teacher's classroom. So you will get to know your individual teacher. What about children who can't sit still and play with the computer, turning things off and muting? Well, that's, you know, we have that when the first day of school, we have kids that can't sit. We have kids that, um, you know, don't listen or can't sit on the rug. And it's gonna be something that we will have to build their endurance in. So if your child can sit for five minutes on day one and 15 minutes on day 15, then that's a victory. And so we're going to take those small gradual successes because our kids are five. And it definitely is going to be, a, you know, I'm sure in people's home, as in my home, I have a child approaching middle school and high school. And as much as I might want to sit and concentrate there's a lot of things going on behind me and <laughs> below me and on top of me and so it, you know it's going to take um you know some time for children to develop that level of concentration and that is what kindergarten has always been about you know it's always been about kids coming in uh, maybe not having um, structures in place for whatever reasons, um, never been to school or, you know, we're more in a, in a play, play-based play therapy and now all of a sudden we're going to ask them to sit for five, then 10, then 15, and maybe 20. And, um, you know, this is going to be something that we're going to hope and really work on, you know. So I'm sure we're not the only school that's having this conversation. And, you know, we, we definitely empathize with you parents, um, you know, who are going to have to go through this um, with their children and, and, and learn. Um, but, you know, one of the things we want to do is set our children up for success. So you can start by getting them really excited about school, creating a nice little space for them, you know, a little, you know, clear area for them to put their Chromebook, you know, pencils and, you know, getting them up and early, getting them back on the routines about going, you know, going to sleep and different things like that, you know, and they, you know, it's like their little job. And they see mommies and daddies and grandmas and uncles go to work every day. They, they understand that concept of, you know, kind of focusing on something. And, you know, um, we, I've worked with kindergarten now for eight years. And um, they're, they're a great group of kids that can do anything they set their minds to. I'm not concerned. Hours during the week, 8.30 to, um, sorry, 8, uh, 8, 8.30 to 2.45 um, with instructions starting at Lacey around nine. So we give you like the first 20, 30 minutes to get yourself ready. Again, all of these questions are on the frequently asked uh, link on the Bryant School website. I wanna take a moment to thank Ms. Smith, uh, Ms. Nazreen. We also have our school nurse on. Um, you know, we were prepared to answer questions about uh, mitigation and COVID, but we're not going to be here. However, uh, Ms. Amis Aguero is our nurse from Bryant School. So she knows many of our families. And if she had not known you, she had an opportunity to meet you during the registration 
application process and communicate with you. So she is also available and she will be responsible for kind of disseminating any information that we get from the district, the state or the county in terms of updates for COVID and um, recommendations and guidelines. So um, I wanna thank her for being on this call and I will be remiss to thank um, Ms. Mc Ms. McDuffie, my school secretary who compiled all these questions from parents um, and put them on this frequently asked question um, document so you guys can process it and uh, kind of look. Um, does the Chromebook have access to all sites? What about kids who know how to go on to games in the middle of the class? <laughs> um, if they're educational games, I <laughs> Um, uh, uh, the, um, I think Muhammad, um, I think there are certain, um, um, what do you call like parameters on the Chromebook, um, for students? You want to, do you know some of those? Can you speak to that, Muhammad? Yeah, sure. So, uh, we do have a content filter on all of the Chromebooks. We use Go Guardian. Um, we, we generally have, uh, you know, certain blocks on, on games or any explicit websites that, um, you know, that would, we try to stop the students from accessing those. But we do also try to keep an open mind so that um, if there are any educational games uh, we, we're allowing the teachers to go to those educational games and, and show the students those educational games. So it's kind of like a fine line that we play and we constantly are adjusting it. It's, a, it's never just a plug and play and we're done. It's always, hey, can we get this unblocked? Sure. Can we block this? Sure. Um, and so we do have that content filter. The content filter does work even while the devices are home. So we have GoGuardian and uh, if you have any questions, um, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, are we able to get Zoom on the Chromebooks? Um, well, Zoom is an, uh, just an open site. The question is more, more so would our teachers going to be using um, Zoom, Mohammed? What's the, what, what's the district's position on the Zoom? So currently we are using Google Meet for any uh, instruction. instruction. Okay. Yep, so Google Meet is our, uh, you know, preferred way, um, and it also um, integrates very well with the Google Classroom. So I definitely would suggest, I mean, the Google Classroom would be new for all of our kindergartners. Um, our teachers will have, have already had and will continue to have professional development. Um, if you are a family that's not familiar with Google Classroom, please do your due diligence, whether it's getting on the Parent Academy or just kind of Googling. Google has awesome PDFs and one-pagers for parents just to kind of get you to understand um, what it is and what you know what it is going to house for your kids um, we were really lucky that we've also used it as a professional learning community at Bryant so our teachers are much more familiar with it it's not something we just started with um, but we do understand that it's going to be new for our kindergarten so we will take it slow and we will use those first six weeks to really kind of you know teach students you know where to look how to look um, as a parent who went through this in, you know, March, April, you know, teaching my upper grade student how to navigate Google Classroom. So um, it's definitely something that you guys will learn um, as a family. No, one thing for the, but we are not able to access Zoom for things like these virtual. Oh, um, I'm not sure why you're not able to access Zoom, Miss Miss Zoom, uh, James, but I'll find out. I'll find out. Okay, so I'm going to be um, under the high schools having their town hall. I want to thank again all the staff that's on. Um, we miss you. We love you. And the building looks amazing. And we hope to get in there very, very soon. And for our families, um, we'll be sending out lots of things. So please make sure to look out for things from Miss McDuffie, myself, and your classroom teacher. Everything will be sent. We're going totally paperless. So everything will be sent. And we'll communicate with you guys um, when there's anything um, to pick up. We are planning a virtual and um, a live uh, ribbon cutting September 17th. And can we please tour the building with our child? Um, at this time, the building is not even fully complete. And um, due to COVID restriction, um, we cannot let anyone tour the building. However, um, you know, we will try to get, you know, pictures out and everything. Literally, we're, we, we just unpacked 400 boxes. Well, not we, not me, but <laughs> the vendor unpacked 400 boxes today. So the building is not even up for, for touring at this point. 
I'm not getting emails. Um, if you're not getting emails, um, please contact um, C. McDuffie at teenexschools.org. Um, she is the principal secretary. She is the one that you would have communicated um, for your original registration. And you could always contact the registration office. We are getting our phones this week. So I wish I can give you a number, but we still do not have phones um, at Lacey School. But any questions, you could either call Brian and they can get in touch with us, or you can call Ms. Rose Antonori, or you can email Ms. McDuffie if you have an issue with your Skyward and you're not getting your email. Make sure you unblock us and make sure <laughs> and make sure, um, you know, we're not going into your junk mail um, and socially distance, of course. Yeah, we had intended to do tours when we were going to do hybrid, but right now we'll wait for direction from the district. At this point, there's only going to be a few buildings that are going to be open for child pickup and drop off and Lacey is not one of them. Okay, so I look forward to um, seeing you virtually um, and communicating as soon as our phones um, get up, you know, we will have opportunities to talk to our families and, um, you know, please let your children know that we are excited to see them back and we're ready to start school. And uh, we want to thank you, everyone, for your support. Thank you, Mohammed, DJ, Mr. Salah in the background, who's been facilitating this. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it <laughs> with the headphones. Um, and uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you, guys.